merciful and compassionate Father. We confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health and mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts, our lives, to the transfiguring, transforming love of our Lord. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord, who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, How am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You my glance seeks. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He will change our lowly body to conform with His glorified body by the power that enables Him also to bring all things into subjection to Himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I can cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make Three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them. And they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. Friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They were asleep. What a strange detail in the gospel story today. Peter, James, and John are brought to the mountain by Jesus. And while Jesus is praying, while something wondrous about him is being unveiled, these companions of Jesus are, quote, overcome by sleep, unquote. Fast forward to another place, this time in the Garden of Gethsemane. They have just had supper, a different kind of Passover, and farewell. And something terrible is about to happen in the darkness. Jesus is praying hard through the night. And once more, they are asleep. You'd think that this spellbinding transfiguration event on the mountain would have been dazzling enough to wake them up. Enough at least to keep and remember for a terrible disfiguration about to happen. You'd have expected this wonderful revelation of Jesus' identity to have given his disciples enough spiritual savings to withstand the divestment on Good Friday. You'd think that with the high and ecstasy of the transfiguration, his friends would have had enough spiritual capital, enough spiritual strength to stand with the beloved Son of God on Calvary. But no. When their Lord and Master is taken away from them, they scatter just the same in panic and fear. They disappear Except for the women and John, they hide their faces.
from the horribly disfigured face of Christ on the cross. We let transfiguration moments sleep. We let them hibernate. Even this gospel story of the transfiguration is a sleeper. A sleeper is something of true value that gets recognized or appreciated only after some time. As in sleeper movies or sleeper works of art. In spy stories, sleepers are those agents who remain unnoticed or below the radar until they are later activated into action. You might wonder how this spectacular transfiguration event could have been allowed to just pass and stay below the radar. But we do let it go under. We let it stay below the ground. We forget. We so easily forget. We fall asleep. <clears throat> and when we let this singular moment of transfiguration slip away, we fall into panic and fear. We run and disappear. The transfiguration event is not exclusive to our Lord. There are transfiguration moments in our lives. There are these moments as well, which may not be as spectacular, but just as luminous. We celebrate these shining moments when, if only for a moment, our faces are lit, hope is kindled, and we are confirmed by God and by those present who matter to us. Every wedding, every ordination, every graduation is a transfiguring moment. And our transformation is not because of the makeup or the vestments or the pageantry of it all. Even the birth of our child transfigures us. When we ourselves were born into this world without even intending it, we gave unimaginable joy to our parents, changing them for good. And we did not even have to change or dress up for the occasion. Even Edsa was a transfiguring moment. Where on earth did we get the collective courage to face down the military might of a dictatorship? Even these days are not empty of transfiguration moments. And while we sorrow over the vulgar disfiguration of human lives and dignity, the disfiguring of truth and justice and democracy today, there have been faces staring down the dark side, faces transfigured by the courage of their convictions, faces changed by the light of their faith in God and their compassion for those cast aside. We are thankful for these transfiguring moments in our lives. Let us take care not to let these moments sleep. We might let them hibernate. We should not, but we do. And then we forget and we ourselves fall asleep. Let us pray then to stay awake, awake to the truth of who we are and who the man on the cross truly is. Pray to remain with the Lord and his people. Pray with our Lord who prays through the night. Let us not be overcome by sorrow or sleep. Pray, sleeper disciple, to be activated into action. Pray, sleeper disciple, to be brave in love and sacrifice. And pray 
Pray this Eucharist to transfigure our bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. <clears throat> Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, our covenant with you in Christ is the cause of our hope. Now we humbly approach your throne, O God, as we lift our supplications to you. We pray, sustaining God, hear us. Sustaining God, hear us. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, religious men, and women, to their faithful <coughs> witnessing, may they carry out with zeal the mission of mercy of Christ, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For those who exercise civil authority in our country, may they take part to the call of the gospel to protect the sanctity of life and promote love, peace, and justice for all, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For the end of the pandemic, may all of us who are experiencing in any way the suffering caused by the pandemic be given the grace of healing and strength to endure the struggles towards consolation and greater peace, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For those who want to repent from their <clears throat> sinful ways, may they approach the grace of mercy and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For the catechumens, may they be firm in their resolve to <clears throat> renounce sin so as to be reborn at the font of life and salvation, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. May our belief in the resurrection of the body sustain us as we pray and mourn for the death of those whom we love, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For those celebrating their birthdays, Fritz Yanko, Archie Prodigalidad, Amanda Tan, Donia Ramos Tan, Malu Magno, Sandra Yu, and Rafa Pepot, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For the healing of Donnie Salvador, Emily Coaso, Fides, Se, Belly, and Regina, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For the repose of the souls of Dr. Aida Kaluwag, Benedicto Savillo, Leon Molina, Bolivar Alumia, Salvador Napa Sr., Macario Laurel, and Ben M. Velas, we pray. Sustaining God, hear us. For the special intentions of Menen and Elin Arasid on their wedding anniversary, Bong Resho and family, Aida Quijano and family, Balu Gray Tanyedo, Paul and R.C. Amon, Welvi Cadigoy, Hannah Gonzalez, Lisa Halandoni, Ikebana International Manila Chapter 108, for its 55th anniversary, we pray. Sustaining God, God hear, us. hear us. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Sustaining, Sustaining God, God, hear us. Father, 
whose mercy endures forever. Listen to the prayers of your faithful people, and by the word of truth and spirit of grace, prepare us to be cleansed by Easter mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. and from the labor of our brothers and sisters which shall become for us the bread of life blessed be God forever blessed are you Lord God of all creation to your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine work of human hands which shall become for us our spiritual drink blessed be God forever Lord we ask you to receive us we please you to sacrifice Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis, our Pope, Ernesto, our Bishop, the clergy, and all those who shepherd and guide your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Friends, behold the one who is awake to the world and to our lives, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, who are always invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive this, these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads to pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain the, that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Eucharist has been offered. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.